Hello and welcome or welcome back to my channel. I did just hit myself in the face. <laughs> I hope you guys have been having a really good week, but it is that time of the, I want to say that time of the month again because I don't do this once a month, but it is that time where I'm going to be doing another reading wrap up. I feel like I do a reading wrap up sort of every eight books that I read, which is not once a month, but I feel like that keeps it regular. That keeps it good. It keeps it fresh, keeps it not too often, but still regular enough. Anyway, let's jump into the video. I have eight books, as I said, to tell you about, tell you my review, my thoughts, my feelings, everything. And that comes to a total of 2,215 pages, which is quite impressive when you put it like that, I'm not gonna lie. I've read eight and a bit books. The bit is a book that I DNF'd, but I got to like 56% in it. So I'm gonna give it a little review anyway, because I had a couple of people ask me about it. So I was like, I'm gonna include it. I did also break down another statistic and that was my average rating. It's been a little rough. I feel like I've been in a bit of a slump. All of the books that I've read, bar maybe like a one or two, have been pretty mediocre. So my average rating is a 3.6 star. And obviously all of the books that I've read in the past like month, two months, two and a half months have been romance books because I'm in a romance mood. Also, before we jump into it, I like to rate my books on a star rating, which is pretty self-explanatory. I feel like we're all pretty comfortable with the five star rating. And then I also like to rate them in terms of spiciness. So my spicy or my chili rating is mostly about the quantity of smut in a book, but quality does sort of influence it a little bit. Like if there's only one scene but it's five chapters long so let's get in to the first book these first two books i actually read in my reading booktubers five star reads video which is really really fun it was a vlog so that does mean i've already given you my in-depth reviews on these first two books but if you want to skip ahead timestamps are in the description the first book that i have for you in today's video is say you swear by megan brandy i gave this one a three star and I gave it a 1.5 out of 5 on my spicy scale. There was a couple of scenes, but for the thickness and the length of this book, it's like 500 and something pages. There was maybe like two or three scenes maybe two. Say You Swear follows Noah and Ariana and in my opinion it sounded like it had a pretty interesting plot. Ariana spent the summer with her brother and his friends and did have a little fling with one of them. However, he broke her heart. He's an asshole. She's ready to move on and enjoy her first year of college. Although during like a little bit of a beach party during the summer she did meet Noah and Noah is our main love interest. So she met him briefly and she kind of bumps back into him when college commences because he is the football team captain and her brother and his friends are on the football team. So they all kind of run in the same circle. Noah may potentially just be the biggest sweetheart in literary history. This man is so lovely, so respectful, knows how to cook. Hello. He is the full package. However, even Noah Riley couldn't save this book for me. <laughs> As I said earlier, the plot did sound interesting and I, for the most part, enjoyed it, save for a few cringy moments. Megan Brandy's writing style, I don't know if it's her writing style in general or if it's just in this book because this is the only book that I've read from her, but her writing style is really not for me. I found it incredibly choppy and just like so hard to make sense of anything. We also got introduced to all of the characters and there is a plethora of characters because it's sort of like a family setting at the beginning of the book with like all the extended family. Um, we got introduced to all of them within the first like 20 pages and as they popped back up throughout the book it was never explained again who they were which maybe if you're familiar with the universe this book is set in that's not an issue for you, for you but for me... <sighs> trying to keep track of that family tree and know in my heart and my mind that two of these people aren't related as they are like hooking up. It was interesting to say the least. So yeah, I am a little bit sad to say that I didn't love Say You Swear and I still have kind of like mixed emotions towards it. We'll just have to see if I pick up another Megan Brandy book in the future. Next up, I read Addicted to You by Krista and Becca Ritchie and I gave this one a four star and a one out of five on my spicy scale. There was scenes and like a lot of talk about sex in this book, but I don't know that there was really many on page scenes. So I don't really know how to rate it in that regard. I am like almost positive that a lot of you are going to be familiar with Addicted to You, but in case you're not, we follow Lily, who is a sex addict, and Lo, who is a high-functioning alcoholic. And this book is essentially the highs and the lows of their addiction and how they enable each other and then pick each other back up to do it all over again. I really liked this book, which I feel like is an unpopular opinion. I feel like not, not a lot of people like the first book in this series, but I enjoyed it. I'm unsure if it's a good representation 
medication of addiction or not. I've sort of looked into it a little bit, but I couldn't really find anything solid. But it was still really interesting and quite entertaining to read. I, controversial opinion, quite liked both Lily and Lo as characters. They're absolutely toxic for each other and not like the best people. I am really, really excited to kind of read the next book and the book after that to see how their addictions progress and how they recover because they are going to recover. And I'm really looking forward to how that kind of shapes them as characters and affects their relationships and how they're going to like grow and move on. And yeah, I really, really like this book. I also loved the found family aspect of it. Even though the found family is only really just getting started, we get introduced to Lily's bigger sister, I want to say. Rose. I love Rose. She's love her. She's great. Um, and we also get introduced to Connor and Reich who are both such interesting personalities. <laughs> they really add this like fun dynamic to the group and they all just like want to help Lily and Lo and be there for them. But yeah, I really enjoyed this book. I need to not let myself forget about the series because I really actually quite enjoyed it. I also loved the writing style, like in contrast to reading Say You Swear before this one and then coming to such like a polished, such like a fluent writing style easy to understand oh it was incredible it was so nice it was just lovely i felt right at home so just a forewarning at this point i just finished a fate inked in blood by danielle l jensen which i reviewed in my last reading wrap up but that book she set my expectations high and she met them um so every book from here on out sort of the next four books were just a little bit mediocre put me in a bit of a slump the next book that i read was crossroads by Devonie perry i read it on kindle unlimited so i'm just gonna slap the cover up addicted to you by christian becker ritchie is also available on kindle unlimited at least in australia and say you swear has been traditionally published so it's not available on kindle unlimited but i read crossroads by Devonie perry and i gave this one a 3.5 star and a 1.5 out of 5 or a 2 out of 5 on the spicy scale. I, <clears throat> another forewarning, <laughs> I was under the influence of oxycodone for the majority of reading this book. So take my thoughts and my feelings with a grain of salt. Everything's just a little bit hazy. So we're going to do my best. So Crossroads follows West and Indy. And during their childhood, Indy's family vacations quite regularly at West's family ranch, doing trail rides, barbecues, fishing, all that sort of thing. Over the summers that they visited, I think Indy's family went like for 15 years straight or something, maybe with a few breaks here and there, but they went very, very regularly. Obviously, West and Indy grew a little bit close. One thing about me that I think I'm learning about myself is that I love a dual timeline. Crossroads, I think, did it quite well. It was really, really sweet seeing West and Indy in the past and like as their relationship gradually progressed from childhood friends into like teenage angst and pining. But we fast forward like eight years maybe and Indy is back in town. She is cashed up and she has conveniently bought the ranch out from under them. West and his family are naturally pissed but at the same time they can't help but admit that the place really did need Indy's help and her money and they also don't entirely know the full story which we don't, we're left in the dark as well. In my opinion Crossroads was very simple. It was a little bit plain. It was just like the very typical Devney Perry palette cleansing sort of romance book. There wasn't a whole lot of like mystery subplot or anything like that. It was just a very straightforward romance book. I didn't mind West and Indy together but at the same time they didn't feel like the most whole or most fulfilling characters but I still enjoyed it. It was a bit of a mindless read. Again wasn't fully conscious, wasn't fully cognizant while reading this book so we're just doing our best but I think it was still good and I'm definitely interested in reading the next one in the series. Moving on <laughs> to our next mediocre read. I read Watch Your Mouth by Candy Steiner and I gave this one another 3.5 stars and I gave it a 3 out of 5 on my spicy scale because there was quite a bit of smart. Maybe even a 3.5 out of 5 on my spicy scale. Watch Your Mouth is a loose interpretation of a hockey romance. <laughs> it takes place during the off season so there's not a whole lot of hockey talk but he is still a professional hockey player and our professional hockey player is Jackson and our heroine is Grace. This is the second book in the Kings of the Ice series by Candy Steiner with the first one being Meet Your Match which is over here and Grace in Watch Your Mouth just so happens to be the little sister of Vince who is the main male character in Meet Your Match and Jackson just so happens to be Vince's best friend. So we're a little bit forbidden, we're a little bit taboo. We're a little bit blurring the lines. We're a little bit putting the friendship on edge. So what kicks off this book is that Grace is going through a breakup and there's a little bit of miscommunication, a little bit of a misunderstanding because Jackson offers to take her on like a little Sunday drive and Grace misinterprets that as going for a summer long road trip across America. And obviously Jackson's got nothing better to do. He fancies Grace a little bit so he 
toddles off and goes along with her and they find themselves on this big road trip trekking across America seeing all the sights all while trying to fight feelings for each other and then inevitably things happen relationships progress and they then have to try and hide it from the media and especially from Vince so I don't think road trip romances are for me this is my third one I think and I don't think I've not really loved a single one to be perfectly honest I, d I don't really understand what it is about it that I don't like it could be the like lack of place in the book like they're going to so many different locations that you can't really get a feel for like the atmosphere and the environment of the book maybe that's what I don't like about it but anyway I don't like road trip romance books and to be perfectly honest I didn't love either character in this book either Grace I'm not sure I liked her because she might be a little bit too close to home for me. <laughs> I don't like being called out. But Jackson is not my cup of tea. He he was okay until he was rude to a hotel receptionist, which I don't really know why you'd include in a book. Like, there can be other flaws in characters. But anyway, just from that point onwards, he was just, like, giving me such big male manipulator vibes. Like, glaringly obvious red flag energy. He should be on a watch list of some kind. Just didn't like him. Just didn't like him. Which does break my my heart to say because I absolutely adored Candy Steiner's Red Zone Rival series. I love that series so so much. All of the guys, all of the all of the girls, all of the characters in those books. I adore them so much. But so far this series has been a little bit of a letdown. I do have high hopes for Learn Your Lesson, however. Really hoping that one can claw me back. And I also am interested. There's another book in the series between like the team dentist and like the rookie. Oh, I'm so excited for that one as well. Next up, I read Southern Storms by Brittany Cherry and I gave this one a 3.5 star and a 1 out of 5 on my spicy scale. Southern Storms follows Kennedy and Jax and if I'm being totally honest, I can't remember a whole lot about this one either because the septoplasty recovery was a blur, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> we have Kennedy who is escaping her loveless marriage with wheelbarrow loads full of trauma and she decides to relocate to this small town to be in the same vicinity as her sister and her sister being the absolute legend that she is it helps Kennedy get back on her feet helps her relocate helps her move in to a new place and also it gives her a cute little escape of a paddock full of flowers so Kennedy just so happens to be out on a little walk one day she's overthinking she's clearing her head she's feeling her feelings and she stumbles across this paddock full of flowers there's an adorable little picnic bench in the field and she's just like wow this is perfect there's so many daisies everywhere this is adorable I'm gonna sit down I'm gonna have the time in my life just relax for a second however turns out this cute little paddock is not actually public property owned by Jax and Jax is this small town's proclaimed black sheep he's grumpy he's moody he's not particularly friendly and he decides to kick Kennedy off his land there is something a little bit familiar about Jax though and turns out he is the moon to Kennedy's son quite literally because that's the nicknames they gave each other <laughs> Kennedy and Jax actually went to the same summer camp together and they became very fast friends, hit it off immediately, just understood each other on such a deeper level until Jax's of her father decided to take him away from the summer camp, completely block him from going whatsoever and cause him to lose contact with Kennedy. As I was writing my review for Southern Storms and kind of like jogging my memory, it has me questioning if Watch Your Mouth deserves a 3.5 star because if this is 3.5 and this was actually pretty good, had some good plot, well written and Watch Your Mouth was a 3.5. Anyway, we're gonna keep going. I quite enjoyed this book. I really liked their gradual reconnection and how they kept sort of discovering just small things about each other that like would jog their memory and then they'd be like no way not possible i also really enjoyed how britney really leaned into the like stereotypical small town with like all the gossip there was a allegedly crazy next door neighbor which turned out to be the sweetest little old meddling little lady she was adorable loved her joy i'm a joy fan forever but yeah this was just a really lovely little book quite an easy read there was a bit of a mystery subplot with Jax and his past but yeah overall pretty good i'm definitely interested in reading some more of britney's books in the future next up we have the poor boy by Nikki Sloan. I DNF'd this book at about 56% and I don't think I'm ever going to return to it. I soft DNF books all the time but this one is a hard DNF. I made it about 56% in and because I made it over the 50% mark and I've had a couple of people ask about it, I want to include it in this video. So the poor boy follows Troy and Erica and as the title would suggest, Troy is Erica's poor boy and he also happens to be the son of Erica's best friend. Erica is like an artist agent 
agent, a talent agent. She like scouts musical talent and like recruits to them to her agency. And she catches Troy performing in a band one night and she's really, really impressed. And she sort of scouts him, but at this point they've already hooked up. So the lines are already blurred and they have this sort of like back and forth where it's like, no, we can be professional while still maintaining this relationship on the side. And then it's like, oh, maybe we can't be professional. Actually, maybe we should stop altogether, but then they can't help but come back to each other. Anyway, it's a lot of back and forth. And my reading of this book, I think was me trying to push my comfort zone a little bit, but I think I pushed it the wrong way. <laughs> I've never read an older, oh, actually that's a lie. I have read an older woman uh, try to a book in Lessons in Corruption by Gianna Darling, but I haven't read one quite to this extent. There's like something like a 20 year age gap. And you know, me being 21, me not being interested in anyone younger than me whatsoever. <laughs> I just felt a little bit uncomfy uh, reading this book. And I do think there is like an audience out there for it. I'm just not a part of it, but I'm still happy that I tried to read it. And honestly, if you think that the pool boy sounds like it might be up your alley, I definitely encourage you to read it. I really enjoyed Nikki Sloan's books in the past, especially the frat boy. Love that book so much. And I think her books are written well. The content in the pool boy in specific, I just don't think is for me. So I'm gonna DNF it. I'm gonna move onwards. I'm still gonna read Nikki's books and we'll see where she takes me. Next up, I read two little novellas from the Improbable Meet Cute series. And this was my kind of attempt to get out of my book slump and like get myself reading again. So the first one that I read is The Worst Wingman Ever by Abby Jimenez and I gave this one a 3.5 star and like I don't really have a spicy rating for it because it's a novella and there was no smart. So we have a Holly who is our heroine and she's a hospice nurse and she's currently caring for her quite quickly declining grandma and she also finds herself miserably alone on Valentine's Day. However, she still gets a pretty saucy little note left on her windscreen that turns out to not be for her whatsoever. <laughs> so our hero whose name is slipping my mind completely, I feel like it might have been Zach but that might also be wrong. He was tasked with the job of leaving his brother's fiance a note on her car and he ends up getting the wrong car and leaving a note to Holly instead. So as they both frequent this same building, it leads to them kind of picking up this little exchange, writing each other back and forth, corresponding through little handwritten notes that get left on like Holly's back tire or something. But it's quite sweet and they like form these little inside jokes and gift each other little like random things until they ultimately meet. I really liked this little novella. I think it was pretty solid. It's about 60 pages long. I feel like it was quite true to Abby Jimenez, even though I've never read one of her books. Just from what I've heard, I feel like it was quite true to her writing. I do wish the novella had a little bit more like emotion in it I guess they're just like I don't even know how to describe it there just wasn't a lot of feelings coming from the characters which is honestly fine it's a 60 page long novella what more do I want and the ending also felt a little bit rushed but again it's a 60 page novella what more can I do so yeah I still enjoyed it I definitely recommend it I read it in like an hour so a super super quick super easy read it's also on Kindle Unlimited as is Southern Storms and The Poor Boy because I keep forgetting to mention that they're on Kindle Unlimited. <laughs> the next novella that I've read is The Exception to the Rule by Christina Lauren. And I gave this one a four star. And again, don't really have a spicy rating for you because there wasn't any. So in The Exception to the Rule, we have Tara and we have Callum and Callum mistakenly emails her on Valentine's Day, which consequently leads to like 10 plus years of back and forth correspondence, just wishing each other a happy Valentine's Day. Obviously, as the years go on, they get more curious about each other, start sharing tidbits of information with each other and curate all these like little inside jokes and like cute little moments. And eventually they decide that they should probably meet. This one was really, really cute. I loved both characters, like Callum especially. I love that man. I want a full book from that man. Thank you very much. This one definitely had a nice kind of amount of slow burn and I probably Approximately 50, the first 50% of the book was just email correspondence. So that was very easy to read. It made me feel like I was conquering my book slump. The jury is still out on whether that's actually happened. But yeah, I really enjoyed this book. Very, very cute. Would 100% recommend. And last, but certainly not least, in fact, potentially the most least, if that makes sense. <laughs> the best book that I've read out of this whole stack. We have Where We Started by Ashley Munoz. I gave this one a 4.5 star and a 3 out of 5 on my spicy scale. And this one is available to read on Kindle Unlimited if you're interested. So in Where We Started, we have our heroine, Callie. And Callie's father is actually a president of this like super notorious motorcycle club in Virginia. And Callie, to be perfectly honest, wants nothing to do with this life. She got out 10 years ago. She's done with it. 
her. She doesn't want anything to do. Doesn't want to know any of them. However, when her father passes away, in his will, he leaves her the entire club's property as well as the clubhouse and just basically the entire thing. He leaves it all to her. So by Callie kind of accepting this will, she is pulled right back in to the club's business and finds herself in this battle between her and the new club's president who just so happens to be her ex-boyfriend. As I said earlier, this book is available on Kindle Unlimited. I read it on Kindle. However, evidently I have the paperback because I loved it so much. And I loved it so much that I also had to buy the remainder of the series that's currently available in alternate paperbacks. There is a fourth book in this series that just came out but I haven't been able to find the like discreet cover of it yet so don't have that one in the collection just yet but she will be joining these three when I find her. <laughs> the writing and the pacing in this book is just like honestly so addictive. I did not want to put it down whatsoever. There's some like very very long like 40 minute long chapters in this book and I found myself racing through them because I just was itching to find out what was going to happen next. Wes who is the main male character the love interest in the book he wasn't my favorite but because this book is set in dual timeline and I love a dual timeline seeing him in the past and how he behaved towards Callie before he was sort of like tainted by the motorcycle club he was such a sweetheart such 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 a sweetie and just like so caring and like oh so cute and then seeing him in like the present day and he's this like big bad gruff motorcycle man who has such like a hard shell and doesn't want to take from anyone but like seeing him still have little like sweet moments with Callie and letting those like slip through and Ashley does like such a great job of sprinkling little crumbs of Wes just being like sweet Oh, it was just written so, so expertly and I really, really enjoyed it and all the crumbs and I just, oh, I ate it up. I really, really did. I also loved Callie. I think she was a great heroine and conveniently, when she returned to the town, she actually brought her best friend with her who does just so happen to pop up in the second book. So she's, she's the main heroine in the second book. So I'm really, really excited to read that one. I loved Laura in this book. So I'm excited for her book. And yeah, I can foresee this series becoming one of my new favorites, hence why I bought the paper backs because god I just love this first book so so much like it's giving me that same addictive feeling that I had when I first read the Born in Blood series by Cora Riley like I just I want to read them so bad and I love them so much anyway with that we have come to the end of the video I really really hope you guys have enjoyed I quite enjoy kind of like going back and catching up on what I've read when I do these reading wrap ups because quite often I forget about them <laughs> I forget about all the books that I've read. Yeah, I had a really, really good time. I definitely feel like I am sort of reigniting the spark for reading that I feel like I might have lost for a little while there. So that's really exciting as well. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. I really hope you found some new books in this video. Potentially, if you've read any of them, please comment down below letting me know what you thought about them. Yeah, thank you guys so, so much for watching. Once again, if you did enjoy this video, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe because I would love to have you here. My Instagram and my Goodreads are also always linked down in the description if you want to check them out and yeah thank you guys so so much for watching and i will hopefully see you in the next one bye